Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. Sorry, I've kind of been a bit absent on YouTube uh, for a while. It's actually the middle of January 2024. And I think the last time I vlogged was October 2023 um, for my roundup of the month. And I just haven't done my November roundup yet or my December roundup. So I'm hoping to do that and have, have that up on my uh, YouTube channel as soon as possible. Uh, for those of you that do subscribe, thank you very much. And when um, new content does get uploaded, you will be notified of that, hopefully. And um, for those of you that don't yet subscribe, if you do, or if you are liking my content, please kindly click the like button and the subscribe button, and please spread the words to your, um, spread the word to your sewing friends or your other friends. And it just helps uh, my channel to get um, sort of my videos out there. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, today is going to be my roundup of the month for the month of November. I think I made six or seven items I'm not quite sure um in terms of just vlogging it's just been a lot it's just been a lot happening recently just with the family uh, for those of you that do follow me you'll know that I have nine children yes that's correct nine children all of my own children <laughs> that came from me and my husband <laughs> um, no adopted no twins no triplets uh, nothing like that at all um, and so, yeah, we had a very busy um, couple of months, obviously, with Christmas. Um, not only do we have a large family, but we also have a large extended family. So we had lots of uh, people coming and going um, a week prior to Christmas and a couple of weeks after as well. Um, I think for Christmas Day, we had about 40 odd people plus my family of 11. So it's about 50 odd people for Christmas Day. Uh, a week prior, we had about nine people staying over for the week prior to Christmas and a couple of days after. And that was mostly Daniel's family. Uh, and then for the New Year's weekend, it was my family, which is slightly smaller. And then again, the week after that, we had friends come and stay. Uh, mostly, they were all from London. Um, because um, for those of you that, you, that do follow me, um, we were living in London up until three years ago. Um, so it's still uh, people from London coming to visit. Uh, but it was great. Lots of memories made, lots of eating, um, not too much drinking, um, lots of family time, um, playing board games, you know, big feasts, just catching up with the cousins and the in-laws and everything else. It was really, really lovely. Really enjoyed Christmas. Um, and yeah, it's another new year, although this is November 2023. So I will I will talk about the new year Um in my uh, later vlogs um what have i been up to so yes the month of november sorry the reason why i have obviously been apart from being busy with life in general and christmas is that i find i don't know if most of you find it as well other vloggers um for the roundup of the month i find it quite difficult to get gather together everything that i have made um in one place so that i can talk about them um, because I make things for myself and my for my children and sometimes you know an, a garment is being worn at that moment or it's in the wash or it needs ironing or we can't find it or what have you so it's a case of dragging out things from the laundry basket because you can't you know I'm just showing you the garment and I'll obviously show you photos of myself wearing them um, so that's kind of an issue second issue is obviously trying to get a quiet house I mean you can hear in the background the children are still awake it's Sunday um, the I don't know 10th of January around 7 p.m. so it's going to almost be bedtime for the little ones but I've always been trying to wait for when the little ones are asleep and also I forgot to mention baby Theo my youngest is almost nine months now and he's been teething a lot and he had a bout of conjunctivitis as well um, a couple of days ago and so he hasn't been sleeping kind of you know around his sleeping time which is like quite late actually about nine o'clock so I've had to be like he's he's been very clingy so I've had to hold him sort of most of the time and therefore basically I haven't been able to vlog and actually sewing for the whole of January I've not touched my sewing machine at all for the past two weeks um, and I'm kind of itching to start again so I'm going to try and start something small like maybe a garment for the children no more hoodies this time I know you, you guys are fed up with my hoodies well you're not fed up with my hoodies you've not said that but I do do make I do make a lot of hoodies but I'm planning to make um, a shirt like a long sleeve formal shirt for my two boys Zachary and Zander I'll talk about that later on in my plans but just like as a palette cleanser and I have other plans as well but um I've just been sort of chatting away um so what were we talking about November November roundup of the month yes and um, what I'm wearing unfortunately <laughs> another thing with the vlogging is just um, having myself presentable in, in something that's not got baby spit on it. Uh, this is a lovely, <laughs> um, I would say loungewear, but that would be lying. I'm in a pair of pajamas. This was gifted to me by my mum uh, for Christmas. It's just some lovely fleece pajamas, shop bought. 
um, and it's just so comfy so I'm just wearing it is 7 p.m. and I'm wearing pajamas already so hopefully you can only see the top half and I have put makeup on so I'm still I'm still presentable hopefully so let me start the first make that I made in November it's not in any particular order but I wanted to join the Fabric Godmother peony party um, I don't know if you remember um, at the end of November beginning of December they hosted a um, peony party on Instagram basically make a peony dress uh, which is their first um, pattern that they've released fabric godmother using any fabric post it on their Instagram page and the prizes were amazing the first prize was a husk Havana I think that's how you pronounce it sewing machine worth a thousand pounds and I think the lady that won it she was on Instagram I think it was just a personal account she had about I don't know 50 posts not that many followers she wasn't following that many and she won this amazing machine and I kind of um clicked on her um Instagram page and I just congratulated her for winning such an amazing machine anyway I really did want to win <laughs> I really did want to win something um from from that but alas I didn't win um I did have quite a few peonies planned um but in the end I only managed to make one because I was just strapped for time and you know life happens so the peony dress let me talk to you about that as I say it's fabric godmother's first pattern that they've released it's this pattern here and the line drawings are as such so it's basically a semi-fitted dress um semi-fitted dress um midi length on me i guess it's midi length on most people so you've got two skirt variations you've got the shorter length without the ruffle and then the midi length with the ruffle you've got these three quarter length sleeves they end actually at the elbow or just before the elbow where the elbow bends uh, a sleeve ruffle or an elbow ruffle um yep um you've got waist starts front and back um body starts front and back bust starts and then this has also got shoulder darts so i've never made a dress with shoulder darts before but i suppose it just adds a bit of shaping to the to the shoulder area i suppose um, and what i like about this is this poofy sleeve now i know that i've made quite a lot of um, patterns with poofy sleeves but this one is slightly different because what they've done is the the actual shoulder the actual shoulder i don't know what this bit's called the seam that joins the back bodice and the front bodice is actually um um a little bit inwards if that makes sense so it's not as long so it doesn't sort of end here the shoulder seam kind of ends a bit towards um my neck more so than my shoulder and so the puff of the shoulder actually is at the point of the shoulder rather than sort of drooping so that gives it extra height and also it has this amazing like ruffle i don't know what they call it what do they call it um shoulder puff um they've got a shoulder puff pattern piece that sits inside on the seam between the sleeve and the bodice that creates sort of a puff to keep the puff the shoulder puff puffy <laughs> which is really lovely um as i say it's semi-fitted so it is fitted but it's loose enough it has enough ease so i would say my one particularly has an inch of ease i would say uh, and I, I would i would prefer it to be a bit more fitted so next time round I am going to take it in by a little bit, maybe even just like a quarter of an inch on each, each side. And then you've got an invisible zipper at the back and it has a facing there as well. Sorry, I think I just talked a lot about that. So this pattern comes, goes, uh, finish garments. It, um, what's the word? It caters for a size of, from a size six to a size 30. So it's quite inclusive, I would say. I mean, obviously, I mean, I think it's quite inclusive. Um, so six, a size six would be a bust of 31 and a half inches, waist of 23 and a half inches, all the way to a, um, a bust of 55 inches and a waist of 47 and a quarter inches. Um, and the ease, as I say, for the bust, let's just take a size six, for example. 11 centimeters. 33 and a quarter so the ease on the bust is two two and a quarter inches of ease and on the waist 27 it's about three and a quarter inches of ease that doesn't make sense does it because my maybe i inch anyway that's what the pattern says so there is a lot of ease i wouldn't say too much ease so it's not a it's not a buffet dress. It's not like a really flowy dress, but it is 
you have shape but it's not fitted fitted if that makes sense so it's it's a lovely sort of gentle fit if that's a word um, and i and i like it so <laughs> uh, so that's um that's the measurements um the instructions were very good actually uh, colored um printed colored instructions step by step um what else can I say? So the only thing that was new to this pattern that I had not done before is the shoulder puff. So the shoulder puff is the pattern pieces like this. And what it is, is you obviously cut it out in fabric and then you fold it in half this way. So it's kind of like, I don't know, what shape would that be? A boat, a banana. And then you put gathering stitches all the way through here. And then you um, gather the whole thing together and then it ends up, I can't actually do it, it ends up, so that's all going to be gathered together and it kind of ends up as like, I can't really, can't, I can't describe it, it ends up being like a little poof that you just, oh I can describe, I can show you in the dress, it ends up being like a little poof in the, under the shoulder, um, in the shoulder puff, because it's called a shoulder puff. Hmm. <laughs> yeah so should I show you that first so this is my one here I'll show you my one here I've made it in a Lady McElroy Marley lawn I mean they have so many different lawns they have a Marley care lawn they have a Loretta lawn they have a so there's all different kind of lawns but this is the Marley care lawn I believe and it's this one oh my chair's on it um and I've had this fabric in my stash now for a long time it's I'm sure you guys have know, you know, seen this pattern before. Um, and with the shoulder puff, I'll just show you the shoulder puff, what it looks like. Ah, there you go. So, it looks like this. So, as you can see, this piece gathered and it's gathered there. And that is joined on the joined on the shoulder seam with the bodice there. And basically, as a result, that puffs up that bit there. So when the shoulder, um, when the sleeve is out, the shoulder puff holds this puffiness here, which I think is really, really lovely. The um, If your fabric is really soft, like a viscose, for example, they do tell you to maybe interface the fabric or use a thicker fabric. So I think what I'm going to do with mine is regardless of the fabric if even if i like i made another one actually but that's for my december make so i'll <laughs> have to talk to you about that on my december make is even just a, a scrap of like um cotton poplin or a bit of canvas as well um maybe not for a viscose because that might be too thick and too heavy but a cotton poplin maybe for a viscose or um canvas for like a cord or a chambray, something like that, if you really like the poof, because I really like that feature. I love how it poofs up um, at the top and at the sides. And also the other tip as well is I, I heard this or I um, saw this on one of the tip videos from, um, um, what's it called? Elias Alex. What pattern company is that? By Hand London is um, if you um, iron your seam allowances for your sleeves if you iron the seam allowances outwards that also helps the puff to, to to be more puffy and um so when i did it the, the the difference wasn't as extreme as what i've seen online but i can see how it adds to the poofiness of it um of it standing up let me just check so if it's like that i guess it would add to the poofiness yes so that's my version i will pop up some photos of myself wearing it and the hacks that I did, so the most important thing was, actually, let me just go back a bit. Um, so the peony dress, when I first got it, because it was quite fitted and I'd never made a, a pattern before by Fabric Godmother because they've never, they'd never released one before, I was wondering what the fit would be like. And I heard all sorts of stories that the fit was quite hard, well, the pattern was quite hard to fit. And so I was thinking, oh no, I really want to enter this competition, this Fabric Godmother peony party competition, but then I don't want to make something in it not fit because it's obviously a waste of time, a waste of fabric, that sort of thing. So so I actually made a toile just of the bodice, just of some like cheap uh, fabric that I had in my stash. I made a toile and it fit straight out of the packet, which was amazing. I did a size 12 um, and it fit straight out of the packet. 
and then so I did it as is with no hacks or anything and then obviously because um as I said I have a nine month old baby and I'm still breastfeeding I wanted to manipulate the darts and the bodice to create princess seams to uh, put um, invisible zips in for breastfeeding access so what I did is I googled um a youtube tutorial and i found a really good one by seamworks and i'll i'll post the link in my description a really good tutorial by seamworks exactly entitled manipulate bust darts to create princess seams and that's exactly why what i wanted so that was really amazing so originally the um the bodice was i mean i've cut it out now so originally the bodice i don't know if you can visualize this in your originally the bodice the front bodice was together I mean, there's a curve in it now. Let's just say it was sort of one piece like that. And um, I'll just quickly go through what I did without too much detail because I will link the um, the Seamworks tutorial for you. But essentially what it tells you to do is find your bust apex. Mine was around this point here. And then it asks you to draw a line from between your um the middle of your um bust start from this point here the middle of your bust start whichever size you are here to your bust apex draw a line there and then from your bust apex to the middle of the dart here and then you cut all the way up here to the shoulder dart luckily enough this had a shoulder dart um actually sorry the shoulder dart from the back i just copied the shoulder dart point and i cut all the way down here uh, and likewise i cut the um dart here and i um join them together to get rid of the dart hope that makes sense and then where i've cut it down i've taken out the dart here as well and it ends up becoming two pieces and then i've added a seam allowance all the way on this side and a seam allowance all the way on that side and basically that's what i did and then i just inserted an invisible zip here on both sides obviously um and i did the same for the back of the bodice now the back of the bodice i'm not sure I mean, I don't know if you can have, I mean, I'm sure you can, if you can have a dress, maybe they don't do it sort of commercially, but if you can have a dress where the front seams are princess seams and then the back, not seams, the front, well, yeah, the front seams are princess seams and then the back seams or darts are the normal waist and shoulder darts. I don't know if you can have that, but I mean, I think you could, because I think by adding the princess seams at, at the back, it doesn't do that much, I think. I th and I think it's extra work, obviously, having the princess seams at the back as well, because you have to cut, you know, four pieces of fabric as opposed to two, and then you have to join those together. I mean, it's not too much of, of work, but, you know, it's extra work. So, I mean, I guess you could just... I mean, no, nobody's probably going to want to do it unless you're breastfeeding. But I guess what I'm trying to say is you may not necessarily have to replicate the um, uh, princess seams at the back of the bodice as well, because I think the effect is, I mean, it doesn't really make a difference for the back, I think. So that's what I did. I also added a ruffle to the neck of mine. Um, so all I did was I wanted a three centimetre uh, tall ruffle so I did three centimeters times two plus seam allowances on either side and the length of the ruffle I googled it and uh, basically for a good ruffle it says three times the um, circumference of your of your neck and that's what I did um, and I just um, hemmed the outside gather put gathering um, stitches and uh, inserted that in between my facing and my bodice and I really like it. So I've shown you photos already, haven't I? So here's, here's what the ruffle looks like. <laughs> here's what the ruffle looks like. Um, and then you can see, I'll hold it up. You can see my seams. That's one breastfeeding seam, uh, zip access, and one on the other side. And then the other thing I did with the um, sleeve ruffle is because my the reverse of my fabric was is a to um, you can see it's um it's lighter my reverse of my fabric was lighter I didn't want that showing through so much in the arms so I basically lined the under of that ruffle so it's basically just the same ruffle piece and then I've just um you know it's right sides together sewn it down top stitched it and attached it as like a double like a faced um, ruffle basically. So that's that one. I really enjoyed making it and I was super, super happy when I tried it on because I just thought it looked really 
fabulous <laughs> and I loved how it fit I loved how the how I achieved the um, breastfeeding zips um, access so I was really really happy with that and I did make another one that was for my December one but I'll show you that in December um, and what else can I say about this pattern I thought also it was going to be too long on me but I didn't I didn't take away any um did I take any no I didn't take away any length on the on the skirt and I'm only five foot four so it's a nice, is it a maxi? It's not quite a maxi. It's a nice midi length for me. And I'm just trying to, yeah, so the frill. Pocket, try pockets from your other place. Oh, this is for my other dress. I'll talk to you about that for my other dress. Um, yes. So yes, instructions are very good. And as I say, it fit me straight off the bat, which I'm really, really impressed about. Um, but I think next time round, I'm just going to take it in at the waist a tiny bit, just because um, I'm not totally shapeless, but I would prefer a bit more waist definition because, I mean, I think we would all prefer a bit of waist definition. So I think I'll just take it in a little bit on either side of the waist. So that's my first make. Um... The second make that I did was, so I did that. Oh, I did a, another Mayfair dress for my daughter, Sienna. And for those of you, I've got the pattern down here. I think I do. Yes, it's the Nina Lee Mayfair dress. Is it still recording? Yes, Nina Lee Mayfair dress this one here I've made this one before so basically it's just a long jersey dress it's got gathers at the waist here a tie you can have a short length or a longer length short sleeves or long sleeves and it's kind of got like a pleated collar detail here and this collar is enclosed using the burrito method that's pretty much it um this goes um from a size 6 to a size 20 Size 6, bust of 32, waist of 24, all the way to a size 20, bust of 46, waist of 38. Very easy, simple instructions. Actually, you could get this done in one evening. It's so easy. Um, the only thing that I had a trouble doing right at the beginning was the burrito method. Um, but luckily, this fabric was a viscose jersey, so it wasn't as thick as my previous one. I made one in a cotton jersey, I believe. And because I hadn't done it before, it does tell you in the instructions to roll your burrito really, really tight because it's quite a short um, space to get it in. I'll show you. Um, and so just to roll it really, 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 really tight to get the burrito nice and tight to do the method properly. So the version that I made um, is this one here. And it's in a leopard print um, viscose jersey from Poppy Fabrics, I think. Um, and I'll pop up a photo of Sienna wearing it. Boop. And um, I'll show you the... Um, so this is kind of like the shawl collar thing. So it's got gathers at the... Um, not gathers, what are these called? Like pleats at the back. And that kind of creates the um, sort of pleating around the neck. And this is the burrito method. So that's all fully enclosed via the burrito method so this whole dress basically so it's quite long needs to be a tied tight rolled tightly to, to squeeze into that um and for those of you that don't know what a burrito method is it's hard to explain online like here um but if you google how to do a burrito method it's just a clean way of um finishing off a neckline i suppose normally you use it for yokes in blouses or like a yoke uh, but they've used it to enclose it all in this um neck piece here um long sleeves um you've got the gathering here at the waist um and it's a lovely simple dress as i say i got it done one evening no adjustments i think i just adjusted the length because the the shorter one was too short and the longer one was way too long so i kind of did one in between and she was happy with that uh so that's my second make and then still on the theme of sienna she wanted some hoodies i <clears throat> What did I do? I got some Alpine fleece from First for Fabrics and I got two meters of each because I wanted to make a hoodie, the page hoodie by Chalk and Notch. I'll pop up a photo. I don't have the pattern to hand. I can't find the pattern to be fair. Um, but it's the uh, 
page hoodie as i say it's a raglan a sweatshirt so the um seams are instead of normal seams that go this way a raglan sleeve kind of cuts in that way um and it has either a band which you normally do have like a waistband or you can have a drawstring as well so with the um page hoodie i like the waistband and not the drawstring but even with the waistband the pattern is quite quite wide at the bottom so i've had to take it in by gosh quite a lot i don't even think i've got the notes but i've had to take it in by quite a lot on the waist um just for it to fit so tapered the sides by two inches on each side just to get because when the, the pieces kind of go out kind of go out as an a-line oddly because i suppose the drawstring would bring it in but i wasn't doing the drawstring so i literally had to just taper it so that it was more it was more the other way so that works out for her so as i say i bought um two different um fabrics from two different colorways of the alpine fleece from first of fabrics i bought two meters of each and i washed it and everything as i do 30 um with or maybe it was 40 degrees with a dryer and then dried it in the dryer which i do with all my clothes and then i was as i was cutting out the page hoodie i realized that it wasn't big enough for the hood's lining which actually didn't matter too much because I think it would have been thick to line it with the hood. But anyway, I know that two meters you could fit a you can fit a page hoodie out of two meters of fabric of that particular width. And so I measured a fabric and I think it was like two meters minus twenty meters centimeters for both pieces. Like it was the exact same size. So it was one meter sixty one meter eighty. And I thought that's odd. And so I contacted Fursa Fabrics because uh, I didn't have my receipt anymore. And I said, um, I'm not sure if you could check my order to see if I ordered two meters or 1.5 meters. Because if I'd ordered 1.5 meters, then you've been very generous and you've given me um, uh, 30 centimeters more fabric. Uh, but if I've ordered two meters, then you've either given me less or it shrunk by exactly 20 centimeters each so anyway she um the lady at first of fabrics it wasn't tamlin and um, the lady at first of fabrics said oh i'll get back to you so they did a test wash um of the fabric got a swash swatch of fabric and test washed it and uh, did she say it shrank as well i'm not sure what she said whether it shrank or not but basically she was terribly apologetic and she said if i needed extra fabric she will send some which was really really nice but i said i don't need extra fabric because i literally lined the hoods with something else but then she said um, she was sorry and that she'd never seen that kind of shrinkage before especially if it was literally 20 centimeters exactly for both pieces of fabric and she gave me a 10 percent discount to use which i thought was a nice um what would you call that gesture of goodwill so anyway that's what happened there um so the fabric i got i will show you so this is the first one it's the i don't know what it's it's the alpine fleece so it's really really lovely and soft and fleecy and it's like a bluey color here i mean this has been used pretty much every other day since i made it which is really nice because um it's nice when you make things and they actually wear it um <laughs> and um i've lined it with just some jersey <clears throat> cotton jersey that i had and this one doesn't have these so this has just got the um waistband at the bottom and i used the same fabric because it was i found it very hard to find matching cuffing and they didn't have matching cuffing either in their shop and i kind of find it hard to, to find matching cuffing if you're doing it online because the colors obviously appear differently on screens although having said that jelly fabrics now um they have in the past if you send them um, a sample of fabric they will color match it for you and then um, message you online and then you can order it which is really really great and i've just done that recently so i'm waiting back to hear from them about a color match on two um sweatshirtings that i'm doing for the girls and the other thing about this as well is what I've done is I've got the back facing, which I learnt from the um, um, made by what Waves and Wild hot chocolate. So basically, I just it's just a um, semicircle piece of fabric that hides the overlocked edge between the um, hood and the back facing, and I just think it looks nice and neat. Um, especially if you're holding the hoodie up there, you can just see that bit, and it's just beautifully nice and neat. So I try to use that. Uh, for all of my hoodies now and t-shirts and yeah most things i think where the overlocked um 
seam is seen when you're hanging up the item I normally add that little back facing and I think that works really really well do I have a picture of her wearing it I don't have a picture of her wearing it because this was my entry for a gift to November that's why both of these hoodies and actually the dress um did I have a picture of her wearing it yes so no the two hoodies were my entries for a gift to November um <clears throat> which was run by Adam Sows and So Like Dotty. Again, I didn't win anything for that, but you know, it's the taking part that counts. <laughs> um, so that's my first hoodie there, page hoodie. And then the second one, it's um slightly different colour, it's like a mauvey colour. Again, it's the Alpine Fleece. Lovely and soft. This time round I added the kangaroo pocket and I've lined it in some leftover poppy fabrics from my Sew Over It kit. There's a bit of fabric sticking out there. And the hood as well, it's the Sew Over It. Um, it's not their fabric, but I bought it from their shop. Lovely color, and I just love how that picks up the color of the purple or the mauve. And then again, oh no, I didn't do a neck facing here. Oh yes, I did. I put the neck facing there. Um, and that's that one. So two of those straightforward everything was undone on the overlocker apart from the top stitching of the hood and the facing obviously and the kangaroo pocket but again you could get this done in an evening i would say like four hours that sounds like a long time it is a long time but in sewing time it isn't a very long time so four hours one evening for a sweatshirt i would say so that's those two and then what else did i make in november I made some more, so the Camden, um, let me just put this away because I'm going to make a big mess. Um, those of you that follow me know that I love the Camden skirt, pinafore skirt by Nina Lee. And I've made quite a few of the Camden skirts, but then um, I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit different and um, do a pinafore, but not the pinafore that they have in the pattern, just the normal bib and straps, um, which I just self-drafted myself. Um, and I will show you what I mean, what pattern I'm talking about. Um, let me just tidy this up. So Nina Lee Camden. Here is the pattern here. So I have made this about four or five times. Great staple skirt. Um, I don't line mine because I normally do it in a chambray or a cord and I don't think it needs lining. And it's super quick. Again, an evening, although maybe the waistband and the zip might take a little bit longer. So this is the pinafore that they have as well. I've not made that yet because um, I've just not made it. So I've just invented my own um, pinafore. So I just added a square piece here as a bib and then straps that go around the back. So this particular pattern, Nina Lee Camden. Sorry about the noise in the background. It's the children still up. This goes from a size 6 um, bust of 32 to a size 20 bust of 46 with a waist of 24 for a size 6 to so a waist of 38 size 20. Um, obviously, it's got bust because they're referring to the pinafore and then the waist and the hips is for the skirt. Very easy to do, although I find the instructions, because the instructions are... Um, it's for the pinafore and the skirt together with the lining and because I've omitted the lining I have to um, it's just a little bit tricky I've just added some notes you know just in terms of for, for my own reference just because I don't do the lining and then it's just slightly a bit more I'm gonna say trickier it's just I need to read it a little bit more and pay attention and it's an invisible zip at the back although I'm hoping if I make it again I'd like to do like a nice metal exposed zip I've not made one of those or I've not inserted an exposed zip before and I'm sure, would it be easier than a, than a zip, than an invisible zip? I don't know. I think you need to kind of like cut out, like fold your seam allowances a bit more, make them bigger so that you've got, anyway, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to just do a YouTuber tutorial for that. So yes, yeah, so the one that I made was my very first one. Did I make that one first or that one first? I'm not sure. Let me show you the plain one first. So I had this lovely, like, rust-coloured denim, which I bought from Sew Me Sunshine, again, in my stash for ages. So here is my version here. That's the bib there. Sorry, it's a bit creased. This is um, hardware. Is Kylie in the Machines there, um, dungaree hardware. Mm, and this is the skirt here. Let me hold it up. This is the skirt. To show you the pocket. Sorry, it's a bit creased. There are my pockets. That is the skirt. And then at the back, you have the invisible zip. 
which I think is invisible. Invisible zip. Um, oh, that bit's invisible zip. So what else I was going to say? Yes, so the bib I just kind of measured where I wanted it to be, I suppose, and that's just two squares of fabric. And then again, this is just self-drafted part. Again, the um, straps, um, I've just measured a pinafore that I've had before. The um, Pippi Pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. Just kind of measured the width and the length of that and I just attached it to the waistband. Luckily, the waistband is in two pieces, a front piece and a back piece. So I've just inserted it in between both the front piece and the back piece to enclose the bib. Um, photo of myself wearing it. I've just paired that with an old uh, Tilly and the Buttons fray top with a cowl neck in a um, French terry from Somi Sunshine as well. And then the next one that I made, oh, and for the skirt, um, I've just lengthened it by, I think, three or four inches because I like my um, skirts to be um, knee length or just below the knee. Um, sorry, they've got darts at the back as well. Do they have darts at the front? No darts at the front. And I just love these pockets. I love how it's shaped this way. So you don't need to put um, markings where the pockets go because you just line up the top to the top of the skirt and line up the side to the side of the skirt and then sew them down. You don't have to worry and that just fit, that just sits perfectly. And then it's top stitch there as well. And then the next one I made was again, fabric from my stash. Um, I think I bought it sort of two Christmases ago in the Lady McElroy sale. It's their um, floral corduroy. Um, and I'll show you here. Ah. So it's the same thing. That's the bib there. It's my lovely pattern matching. <laughs> um, and the skirt. Again, I tried to pattern match those pockets. And the other side, there's this end of the pockets there. And the zip at the back, is it invisible? Hopefully it is. I unfortunately didn't pattern match the back of the skirt. Well, actually I tried to, but you can see that flower, so that, that bit hasn't pattern matched and this bit hasn't pattern matched, but I mean, I wasn't gonna undo it. So yes, exactly the same. And the other thing I, that I do as well with all my skirts now is I use something called band roll, which I have a lot of now. Band roll. So this is um, waistband interfacing that doesn't crush or bend or soften. It's really, really lovely. And I've used it now in probably about five or six items. And I was buying it from the social studio, S-E-W-C-I-A-L social studio um, per meters, per meter. And I think it was like, I'm not sure how much it was, but anyway, I ended up finding it on um, Amazon, a whole bulk ro roll um, on Amazon for much cheaper. And I'll show you what it looks like. I've, I've spoken about this before. So it's basically... I think it's similar to um, interfacing they use for curtains, you know, for like pelmets and things. It's actually stapled down, but so it's like a it's like a plasticky kind of netted thing, but it's really really good. So it's it's stiff enough not to crush but it's soft enough not to dig in, if that makes sense. Anyway, I use it. It comes in two widths, an inch and an inch and a half. I think this is an inch and a half, and I use it for all of my uh, waistbands now, and I just think it's just, it keeps the garment looking crisp and fresh. It doesn't bend and fold, as I say, when you sit down, that sort of thing, and it just makes your garments look more professional. So I swear by band roll, B-A-N-R-O-L-L. -L. So that's that one. And I'll show you a photograph of me wearing that. And I've just paired that with a Tilly and the Buttons Freya top with a cowl neck in green, which I have here. So that's the cowl neck. <laughs> and that's the top um, in just some um, cotton jersey from Pound Fabrics, I, I think, that I had in my stash. And the pattern for that is, oh no, it's not even in this book, is it? It's in the Make It Simple. Stretch. It's in the stretch book, is it in here? Tiddy in the button stretch book. Yes, it is in here. Is it Freya? Freya? 
Come on, Freya. Is it in here? Yes, it's the Freya. Freya. Yep. The Freya sweater and dress. Um, line drawings. All it is is a um, basically a t-shirt with a roll neck with a what is it called? Do they call it a roll neck? Turtleneck, neckband. I don't know what they call it. Um, but then you have the option to have, um, I think it is a roll neck. You have the option to have a cow neck if you want to. Yep, yeah? that's the version I've made. So you've got the option to have a cow neck, which is what I've made. Very simple. All the instructions are in this book. And then all the pattern pieces are at the back as well. So I love Freya's. And um, I love Freya's. I think I've made about 10 in the past. But that's that one. And then the very last thing that I made, something a little bit different, was a bag. So apart from my, um, what was it called? The nappy bag that I made from, um, I made a nappy bag. It's in one of my vlogs. Um, I've uh, made another bag. So I made the Harrelson belt bag by Noodlehead. Harrelson belt bag by Noodlehead and i really enjoyed making this actually so line drawings it's a bag <laughs> it has um are they are they called kind of like like an inverted pleat type thing there and that basically provides volume for the bag to open up i don't know how i'm describing that properly and then you've got sort of tabs here with a swivel clip and a hook and then you've got swivel clip and hook here tabs there flap zip at the back that's the different um things closures you can have and there's also a zip inside um so i've never made anything from noodle head before um it's it's a little bit fiddly but a lot easier because obviously the pattern pieces are much smaller um, it's fun because you're putting lots of lovely metal hardware on, which is nice. It's quite an easy sew and it comes together quite quickly, actually. And I've actually made two. So I've made, um, one that I've gifted to my goddaughter. So that's a picture of that one there. And then another one I made for Anya, who is my eight-year-old, who's now nine, actually. And I'll pop up a photo of it there. And I've got it here as well. Uh, here is the bag here. I don't even know what's in here. Oh no, <laughs> lots of bits and pieces in here. She's got a stain on it as well, which um, is a bit annoying. So here is the bag here. Um, you will recognise that is, oh, that's the stain there. I need to clean that. It's a Rifle Paper Company um, fabric. Is it a canvas? No, it wasn't a canvas. It was just their normal fabric, I think, their normal cotton. Um, I've got what's this called webbing from eBay um, some lovely rose gold hardware from country cow designs I think it's called so these are swivel clips with D rings they come on and off um, a lovely beige zip with a gold pull a, a rose gold pull again um, the what are these swivel clips and D rings this is leather so I just got some off cut leather from Etsy you can buy them um, I wouldn't say relatively cheap. I think it was like £20 for a whole bunch of different kinds of offcuts. And then inside. So what I don't like about this is that the the lining you need to interface. And for some reason, all of my lining, once I've interfaced it, gets all, bub gets all bubbly. I don't know if you can see these creases and bubbles here. And I know this has been used a lot. But even when I first made it, it had a few of these things here as well. And then I was thinking, should I not line it i'm not lying it should i not interface it would that be okay um but i just didn't i just didn't like this especially the one that i made that i was gifting i thought that the bubbling of the of the interfacing kind of made it look used and it wasn't used it was brand new so i'm not sure if anybody knows of any tips of what to do with that um as i say this one's been used a lot now but when i did first make it it already had a couple of those which is a bit annoying so there's an inside inside zip there and then a back zip there as well. And with this inside inside zip here, it shows you how to insert it almost like a, a welt pocket. I think I can compare it to that. It looked like 
the sort of procedure of, of making a welt pocket. I've never made one before, to be fair, but I have watched a couple of tutorials for welt pocket creation. Uh, I've never made one, um, but um, it looks like that, and it's quite simple if you follow all the instructions. So that's that bag there. And I actually really, really like it. Also, oh, this is just um, faux, faux leather from eBay again. Um, so that's a quite nice handy one so it's meant to be it looks like a bum bag or a belt bag bum bag is what we used to call it back in the 80s but it's actually almost like a crossbody so you can wear it as a crossbody so I would wear it as a crossbody and uh, my daughter wears it like as a shoulder bag uh, and you could also wear it as a, as a waist uh, as a bum bag actually if you wanted to just adjust the adjust the straps um, but that's that's that and I think that's all I made for the month of November um so yes i will after this be recording my december makes as well but in the meantime in terms of sewing uh chat i did talk about the family a bit i think did i i did talk to you about my christmas plans did i talk to you oh see i've spoken to you about christmas but this is november roundup so it's kind of so for my December, I probably will just talk to you about my Christmas again. <laughs> but um, also on top of um, just being busy with life in general and Christmas, um, I have started a sewing club. So um, every Thursday afternoon for two and a half hours, um, I have six girls, two of, two of them being mine. Uh, two of them are local girlfriends of ours, um, friends of the girls. And two of them are other daughters of my friends that come to the house um and I basically teach them how to create a garment and it's been really fun actually so the first thing we did was um um actually quite adventurous for beginners so they were all beginners apart from my two girls actually um but we made some tiered skirts in um in corduroy and the base pattern was the Maeve skirt by True Bias. Obviously, that's an adult pattern. So I had to adjust it in terms of width and length. Um, and we added pockets that has pockets. So um, we added those. Um, and they really, really enjoyed it. And that's finished class now. So if I have some photos, I'll pop it up here. I think Anya has a photo of her, her in hers. And I think I might have some photos of the girls just working away on our dining room table. And then in the next week, we've just ordered fabric. And then the next project is going to be a Tilly and the Buttons sweatshirt, Billy sweatshirt. Again, so two of the girls are teenagers, so they would fit um, sort of the smaller um, Tilly and the Button sizes. And then the other three girls are um, child sizes. So I will either use that. I don't think I'll use the Tilly and the Buttons one. I will use like the Ellie and Mac Zane hoodie, I think, for them without the hoodie, just make the neck band and use that as a pattern for them. Um, so we're really excited about doing that. That's hoping to start next Thursday. Um, and then recently in January, I started an adult sewing club as well. So that's every Friday afternoon. And that one's not too much of a, I wouldn't say burden, but that's not too much of a so basically for the Thursday afternoon, I am just offering my time just for the love of sewing and spreading my knowledge, teaching my knowledge and my passion for sewing because I think it's a great hobby to have. It's a great skill to learn and it's just fun and exciting for me. And I think the girls seem to like it as well. But for the Friday one, it's less so of a time consumer for me because every Friday afternoon uh, for a couple of hours, I do go to um, our local homeschool meetup um, in Walsingham and the older children play football or they chat with their friends um, and just basically hang out for three to four, three, two, three to four, two, five, for about three hours during the winter. And in the summer, it's longer because obviously it's warmer and it's lighter for longer so during that time I'm normally having a coffee with friends or I'm chatting at people's houses and I just thought um, especially in the winter you know you can't you know people are just um, busy with their lives and things I don't know why I said that but I just thought if I did something more you know more constructive and I decided that I would run these sewing classes and so now I've got the mums I think I've got Wendy, Sona, Renia, Nancy, Celeste five people doing the adult sewing classes and instead of choosing um one whole 
what's the message say? Instead of choosing one um, pattern for everybody, they're all choosing individual patterns, which is great. Um, so if I have photos of that, I will pop it up probably for my next roundup of the month to show you all the things that they've been making. So that's very that's very interesting, and it's it's nice because people are asking me questions about fabric and patterns and what to do here and there. And obviously, I've told them I'm not a professional; I'm just a hobby sewist. But sort of the the skills that I've accumulated over the years, I've just kind of you know just teaching them and just holding their hands in terms of reading a pattern, cutting out fabric, that sort of thing. So that's that. I think that's all I have to talk about. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe, as I say, if you don't already subscribe. And, and please click the like button as well if you do like my content. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully this will be out as soon as possible. And my December one, I will be recording straight after this one. And that will be out as soon as possible as well. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. God bless. Happy sewing. Bye-bye.